Epigenetic test number five. Was there an impact for NMN? So first, how much NMN? For the 42-day period from test number four to test number five, average NMN intake was 340 milligrams per day. And more specifically, I increased that to 1,000 milligrams per day for the seven-day period prior to test number five. And then, which epigenetic tests? In this video, we'll go through data for Dunedin Pace, Horvath and Hannum, and these data were generated with True Diagnostic, and if you're interested in measuring your own epigenetic age uh, using these tests, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. So for test number four, Dunedin Pace was 0.78, Horvath was five years older, you can see it's in red because that's going in the wrong direction, and Hannum's was 11 years younger in green because it's in the right direction. So what about these data for test number five? Well, let's start off with data for Dunedin Pace. So first, why Dunedin Pace? What's the importance of this epigenetic test? So a younger biological age for people on a 12% calorie-restricted diet for two years was identified by Dunedin Pace, but not by other epigenetic clocks. So let's take a look at that data. First, starting with Horvath on the left and Hanum on the right, and the change, epigenetic change for Horvath on the left, and then the epigenetic change for, for Hanum on the right, there were three time points, baseline, 12 months, and 24 months on a CR diet in red or in black for people who ate as much as they wanted whenever they wanted ad lib. And then we can see that both Horvath and Hannum did not identify a, a epigenetic age reduction for people on CR for up to two years. Similarly, two other gold standard epigenetic tests, PhenoAge and GrimAge, were not able to identify reduced epigenetic age for people on two years of CR. The first iteration of Dunedin Pace, Dunedin POAM, uh, Pace of Aging Methylation, POAM, that test too was unable to identify an epigenetic age reduction for people on CR. But the most recent iteration of Dunedin Pace is able to detect an epigenetic age reduction for people on CR. As we can see there, both at the 12 and 24 month time points, people on CR had a younger epigenetic age as identified by Dunedin Pace. So with that in mind, what's my data? So uh, Dunedin Pace is presented as a speedometer. 0 0.6 on the left would be the slowest epigenetic aging rate. And what that means is for that every one year of chronological age, epigenetic age increases by 0 0.6 years. In contrast, the fastest epigenetic aging rate would be 1.4. So for every one year of chronological age, epigenetic age increases by 1.4 years. So for this most recent test on March 6th of 2023, uh, my Dunedin Pace value was 0.79. So for context, how does this test compare with previous tests? Well, we know for test number four, it was 0.78. And because that's essentially the same, no change, we can conclude that NMN didn't impact Dunedin Pace. So what the good news though is that these two last data points, 0.79 and 0.78, are better than my first three values for Dunedin Pace. You can see 0 0.89, 82, and 80. And now that I have data for five epigenetic tests, going forward, I can investigate correlations with diet to see what may be impacting Dunedin Pace value. So stay tuned for that in a future video or videos. Next up, let's take a look at Horvath data and see if that improved or not with NMN. So Horvath's test is also known as Intrinsic Epigenetic Age Acceleration, or IEAA, and it's a marker of cell intrinsic aging. It's also strongly correlated with chronological age, and that's what we can see here. So on the y-axis, we've got DNA M age, so DNA methylation age, or epigenetic age. And you can see this is the first iteration of the Horvath clock, Horvath 1. And then Horvath 2, on the y-axis for the second on, on the right, that's the second iteration of this test. And on the y-axis, uh, the methyl ep epigenetic age, sorry, me DNA methylation is plotted against chronological age on the X. And then note that there are many different colored circles on both of these plots. That's because this is a multi-tissue clock that includes breast, cheek cells, or buccal cells, brain, cerebellum, colon, cord blood, and so on. And then we can see strong correlations for epigenetic age with chronological age on the left with a correlation coefficient of 0.94, Remember that a perfectly linear correlation is 1.0, so 0 0.94 is pretty close to that. Similarly, the second iteration of the Horvath clock had a correlation coefficient of 0 0.85. So we can see that Horvath's epigenetic clock is strongly correlated with chronological age. In fact, it's the most strongly correlated with chronological age of all of the epigenetic clocks. Now, for the first four tests, my average Horvath epigenetic age was 54.9 years which is in red because it's going in the wrong direction. And you can see that that's four to seven years older than my chronological age 
over that four test span. So what about for this test, now that I've got NMN in the approach? So this test, Horvath epigenetic age, was 52.99 years, which is still three years older than my chronological age. But this is my lowest Horvath epigenetic age over these first five tests. Now, a two-year epigenetic age reduction using the Horvath test could be caused by NMN, or is this just normal variation? So next up, let's take a look at Hanum's epigenetic age to get a little bit more perspective. So Hanum's epigenetic test is also known as Extrinsic Epigenetic Age Acceleration, or EEAA, and is a marker of immune system aging. For test number five, my Hanum epigenetic age was 42.08 years, which is eight years younger than my chronological. Now, superficially, eight years younger than chronological age is good news. But how does this test compare with previous tests? So for the first four tests, my Hanum epigenetic age was 38.3 years. That was the average over those four tests, or 10 to 12 years younger than my chronological age over those first four tests. So this is actually my worst Hanum epigenetic age over the five tests, being eight years younger, which suggests that maybe NMN maybe made it worse. Now, before concluding that NMN had no effect on Dunedin Pace, made Horvath better, and Hanum worse, other variables can affect epigenetic age, including diet or physical activity. So were these variables different when comparing test four with test five? So what I then did was looked at the 42-day period that preceded test number four, and then the 42-day period that preceded test number five, and compared macro and micronutrients, including calories and all of the macros and micros on the left, and then used a two-sample t-test between these two groups of data. And then what you can see with the p-values is that they're all greater than 0.05. So from that, there were no between the uh, test differences for diet, including macro and micronutrients and calorie intake. Well, what about average levels, average daily levels of physical activity? So my fitness track provides the average daily heart rate as an index of physical activity. And note, this isn't the resting heart rate. This is the full day average for heart rate. And for both test number four and test number five for the 42-day period that preceded each test, my average daily heart rate was 55 beats per minute, which was not significantly different test versus test. So from this, we can see that diet and physical activity wasn't different when comparing test number four with test number five. Now, what was different though is, was my body weight as I weigh myself every day, and it was significantly lower for test number five versus test number four. But how that difference would, have, would improve Horvath, but make Hannah worse and not affect on and pace, I don't yet know. I'll have to look at the correlations in future videos to see if body weight may be significantly correlated with any of these epigenetic tests. So from these data, I think it's fair to conclude that there was no effect for NMN, in my case, maybe it's different for others, on epigenetic age, especially when Dunedin Pace stayed about the same, Horvath got a little better, and Hanum got worse. So it's a net neutral, minus one, zero, plus one. Uh, so with that in mind, I think it's possible that my Horvath changes and Hanum changes were just normal variation. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that will be in the video's description that you may be interested in, including discount links for NED quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing as shown in this video, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you could do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.